Okay, so we have a lot of questions to catch up on, and I may have to make this a multi-part video mailbag. We'll see how it goes. So let's get into it. Is the occult just social science that hasn't been accepted, thus hidden? Astrology, symbols, linguistics, psychology, hypnosis, subconscious seems to be like a social science. The occult is science. There is no separation between the occult and science. They used to be one and the same long ago. I wouldn't necessarily call the occult social science, but it is based in science and there are many experiments going on to this very day. Salutations, Tim Jones, if that isn't your real name. No, it is not. Ha, seriously though, in your mystery school warning video, you mentioned unintentional contracts with the Illuminati. Please elaborate as I am quite well versed in the FMC law as well as Social Security and the Selective Service laws and definitions. These are all superseding common law contracts which discreetly make us humans into money-making machines for people who know how to write in an inclusive manner that makes Microsoft's terms and agreements look like children's books. To conclude this, sorry about the length, may I ask for a hint to some of your knowledge on any other unintentional contracts that maybe you may have not meant to mention in that video, or if possible, any Freemasonry advice. My appreciation again in advance. Informative and loving work, brother. Stay on the level, so mote it be. Regards. Oh, well, you pretty much got the gist of it. Um, I can't give you Freemasonry advice because I'm not a Freemason. And we haven't really got into the contract law stuff yet. But if you really want to know more about that kind of thing, uh, the two best films on YouTube is Bursting Bubbles of Government Deception and The Magnificent Deception, both by Robert Menard. He is Canadian, and things will be different depending on where you are in the world, but a lot of it remains the same. Those two films can explain it a lot better than I can at the moment. How to deal with Mars and Moon in Gemini but having Jupiter in Virgo. It's like I want routine but hate routine at the same time. I like things to be spontaneous but need order in my life. Well, what house are they in? <laughs> It's commonplace to have conflicts in the chart, and this is where the houses will come into play and greatly assist you in resolving those conflicts, because the houses are which areas of life that are affected. You could be spontaneous in one area in one house and be orderly in another, I'm not sure orderly is the right word you're looking for, maybe pre-planned, but the houses they fall in will give you the clues you need to help resolve the issue. Magician card has him holding wand to sky with right hand. I'm told that if a person writes with right hand, it is his right hand which gives and his left hand receives. Yes. So if our magi is right handed, it seems he is doing the opposite of what he should be doing. The power from above comes down and he receives it and could then project it out through his wand, I would think. Or does he perhaps indicate right hand path where if the wand pointed up from his left hand might be left hand path usage? More the latter. And echoed within the double card where his torch is pointed downward with the left hand instead of the magician's wand pointing upward with the right. Hi there. You mentioned that Mercury retrogrades can have some advantages for rituals. Do any other retrogrades have other advantages? Venus and Jupiter are coming up in the next couple of months. Well, Jupiter's been retrograde for a while, but um, yeah, I mean, it depends on what you're doing, though. 
to whether or not you would consider them advantages. For example, Venus represents love, so if Venus is moving backwards through the sky, it may be a good time for you to break up with someone if that was your intent. I like to call upon the benefic planets when they're going forward, drawing things to myself while they're at full strength. But I guess depending on what you're up to, you can find some advantage to it. Greeting, Praetor Xavier. First off, I would like to thank you for your work. I know it has inspired myself to even further my practice and also encourage others to listen to your learnings. I know you've mentioned a while back in one of your videos that you would not do anyone's astrological chart anymore. I'm wondering if that still stands. Uh, yes, it does. And you see how long it took me to even get to answer your question. As much as I'd love to do everyone's chart, I simply just don't have the time to do it. It's a very, very time-consuming thing to do. I would honestly have no time for anything else other than charts if I were to do people's charts. Maybe someday when I run out of things to talk about, uh, that may be a possibility. But I don't think that will be any time soon. But I do appreciate and am honored by you asking. So, thank you. How do you release sexual tension that is built up besides sex or masturbation? Because I'm not always going to have a girl around, and I don't, <laughs> and I don't want to masturbate. <laughs> Hold on. I'm thinking that being tired and slap happy probably isn't the best time to uh, do the mailbag, but it is a valid question. Let's see if I can get through it without spontaneous bad Bill Clinton impersonations. Think and Grow Rich suggests is that sexual energy can be converted into something creative. But even if I do something creative, such as engineering draft or writing, I still feel horny and need a release. But again, sex isn't always available and masturbation makes me feel like shit. Well, that's because you're not transmuting the energy over. There is a difference between doing something creative and giving your all. You understand? It's If you're not as tired and worn out after doing your creative endeavor as you would be after having sex, then you're not transmuting it over. You would have to give it to your project just as much as you would give it to that girl as horny as you are. Which is tough to do for a young man. And this is why sexual transmutation normally occurs after age 40. Because believe it or not, after middle age, sex isn't that big a deal anymore. Just ask a lot of married men who would rather give their all to their latest project than to spend that energy on their wives yet again. I know that sounds terrible, and that's not to say that you can't enjoy sex after middle age, but it's been there, done that. It's not a big deal, and that's why after middle age, men are able to focus upon other things. I covered this all before, but I thank you for the question, and you're the first to make Frater Xavier lose his shit while reading a question, so... Thanks. After you finish the Liam Thomas curriculum, do you still do daily rituals? If so, how long does it take every day? There are daily journal writing, meditation, and rituals. You do that every night? Okay, on this one I'm going to give you the same scolding I did the last person who put the cart before the horse. Because if you were doing the curriculum... All the questions that you had just asked would answer themselves. So, I'm not even going to answer this one. As you're so worried about what happens after you finish the curriculum, when by your very questions it sounds as if you haven't even started the curriculum. You will know what to do as you follow the curriculum. Hello, Freighter Xavier. 
anyway, I have a question that if you could answer would mean a world to me. I'll try to make a very long story short. I've been doing this for a while now, and any time someone says they're going to cut it short, it's going to be a long one. <laughs> Just letting you guys know. Things have been a bit rough, financially speaking, for a while. And then he goes on to list several instances of problems that he's had. Thing is, I thought I was either under a really bad luck period or under attack. As I said, I will try to make it short. I've been meditating on it a lot, and I realized that all the things that had happened are about staying. When I told my father about that job offer a couple months ago, he expressed a lot of anxiety about it. He is an extremely negative person, and he's afraid of changes. He's always been and I am almost sure that his desire for me to stay here has been causing all of this in my life. As you said, we all do magic even if we aren't aware of it. So I've kept doing banishings every day and some extra banishings on Saturdays, but I don't want to keep those vibes coming. I've considered what you said in one of your videos, but he's my father. I don't want all this negativity to return to him. Would you have any other idea, or could you point me in some direction? Because I've been thinking about this, and the other than keep shielding myself forever or bring it back to him, I got nothing. Any help is appreciated, and if you can't help, I can understand that. In any case, have a happy week. It could be that you're just under a really bad Saturn transit. Saturn transits last a while, because Saturn moves very slow. It can make you feel like you're going nowhere or have to stay. Saturn puts the brakes on things. It's stop. It also corresponds to the Father. All energy eventually returns to its source, by the way. But sure, you don't want to be slinging things back at dear old dad. Uh, you can look into amulets or wards that will automatically block and deflect that energy coming at you or you can just do a spell that your father isn't so negative and anxious about you leaving but in order to do so you may have to release your expectation of him being negative if you say he's always been that way which may be as equally difficult as him changing because if you have faith that he's always going to be negative, well, I mean, come on. We know what the outcome of that will be. So many people get into magic to try to change the external and people and the environment around them. When the real power of the magician is changing the internal within ourselves and then the external changes as we do so as above so below as within so without as you change what's within you will change what's around you and those around you and as such the magician will use spells more upon himself than on the external things around him. And it's either that or you are going to have to just shield yourself all the time, which really isn't that bad of an idea when you get into magic. You should always keep up on your banishings and your wards. Hello, mentor. What are the benefits of reading physical books instead of ebooks? Is it more of a generation thing? Because the younger generation seem to learn better using ebooks. Well, physical books don't strain your eyes as bad as ebooks, for starters. They're of better use within ritual space, where electronics can sometimes act wonky, but you can learn just as easily from one as you can the other. That's it's a, a preference thing. Question for you. What is the difference between magic and alchemy? Short, basic version. 
Magic is the raising and directing of energy, and alchemy is the transmutation of energy. That's really the simplest way I can sum that up. I was wondering while sitting about if planetary days and hours affect me in terms of my time of birth. I'm an Aries, surprised, born on a Tuesday during a nighttime hour of Mars. Made me wonder why I'm not some rage-fueled anger machine like the Hulk. Hope all is well on your end, sincerely. And thank you. Um, planetary days and hours at the time you're born, eh, not so much. I mean, maybe a little, but it's really going to depend upon the rest of your chart, especially your ascendant. Are you Seth Rogen? Um, no. By the way, I'm irrevocably in love with you. Wink. Still not Seth Rogen. <laughs> But I do appreciate the sentiment. And that will do it for this portion of the mailbag. We still have a bit of a ways to go and I will get to it as soon as I am able to. The bathroom remodeling that we were going through was all last week up until yesterday. But I'm still waiting for the drywall and the painter to come in. Whose schedule is not yet set in stone. So I will have to work around that as it comes up. I'm also going to be making Words of Power available again in the EU. Quite frankly, I don't see how they can enforce the VAT tax. Or if they'll even look at the little guy just selling a digital download here and there. As it's primarily meant for large corporations. But because I sell through Gumroad, you never know. Gumroad says they're not responsible for it. Although, technically, by the rules that they've set, they are. I'm not an EU citizen, so I don't know where they have the authority to force that upon me, other than to simply put a block on my products or Gumroad itself. Which could happen. I'm not counting that out. So if you are in the EU and you were planning on getting words of power, I would get it while the getting is good. Because I don't know how long it's going to last. And with that, I will see you next time. Take care.